Turn with me to the book of Leviticus. We're going to look at chapter number 20, and we're going to look at verse number 1 through verse number 7. Leviticus, the 20th chapter. We're going to look at verse number 1 through verse number 7. And we'll be reading from the King, I'm sorry, the New International Version. Amen. Amen. I'm so used to going to the King James. Um, but we're looking at the NIV this morning. I will read you a hearing. The Bible says, The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Any Israelite or any foreigner residing in Israel who sacrifices any of his children to Molech is to be put to death. The members of the community are to stone him. I myself will set my face against him and will cut him off from his people. For by sacrificing his children to Molech, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the members of the community, somebody say the members of the community, if the members of the community close their eyes when that man sacrifices one of his children to Molech, and if they fail to put him to death, the Lord says, I myself will set my face against him and his family and will cut them all from their people together with all who follow him in prostituting themselves to Molech. Y'all all right? Amen. I will set my face against anyone, verse number 6 says, who turns to mediums and spirituals, spirituals to prostitute themselves by following them, and I will cut them off from their people. The Lord says, you don't have to worry about this. I got good news for you. In verse number 7, he simply says, consecrate yourselves and be holy. Because I am the Lord your God, keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are grateful and thankful that your word is forever settled in heaven. And because we are not afraid to preach, to proclaim your word, God, we are here. Because of your grace and your mercy, you've given us the ability to stand one more time. Yes, yes, yes. And declare the wonderful works of God. Father, we realize in this world that so many people are doing so many things that opposes your direction, but Father, we just made a decision that in spite of, we will not be your opponent, but Father, we will operate according to your word. We ask you, dear God, to bless us as we prepare to do groundwork in this series. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. All God's people said, Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Somebody say, the family. Say it like you have one that you are part of. Somebody say, the family. Amen. We're kicking off the family. This is our series this morning. We're kicking off a brand new series called The Family. Amen. 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 Thank you, musician. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're kicking off this series called The Family. And I want to talk, for those of you that are taking notes, I want to deal with this first lesson. I want to talk about keeping the fame of God's faithful family. Keeping the fame, 
You know, a lot of people want to be famous. We are looking at right now the Olympics where, in my opinion, they are famous for doing all the feats, for doing all the things that they are capable of doing. Man, because not many people can do what they've been doing. Amen. To see them tumbling in the air, swimming the length of the pool that they've been swimming, you understand, do you know how much work it took for them to get there? Yes. And I'll tell you what, America, they are shining pretty good, I would say, don't you? Yes. Amen. So, you know, and, and uh, 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 talk about fame, they got it. And they got it genuinely by working diligently. Can I say it like that? They got their fame genuinely by working diligently. Amen? Amen. But we're talking about the family this morning. The family. Pew Research, which is a nonpartisan or non-biased fact tank, if you will, they inform the public about situation, they inform the public about trends, they inform the public about what's coming, what's happening around people. They deal with issues of today's time. They deal with attitudes of today's time. They deal with, again, trends. So there's an excerpt that I'd like for you to hear, and I quote, family life is changing. And I would like to add, it is changing rapidly. Two-parent households are on the decline in the United States as divorce, remarriage, and cohabitation are on the rise. And families are smaller now, both due to the growth of single-parent households and the drop in fertility. Not only are Americans having fewer children, but the circumstances surrounding parenthood have changed. While in the early 1960s, babies typically arrived within a marriage, today, for the four in 10 births occur to women who are single or living with non, a non-marital partner. At the same time, that family structure has transformed, so has the role of mothers in the workplace and in the home. As moms have entered the labor force, more have become breadwinners. In many cases, primarily of primary breadwinners of their family. As a result of these changes, there is no longer one dominant family form. In the U.S., parents today are raising their children against a backdrop of increasingly diverse and for many constantly evolving family forms. Yes. By contrast, in 1960, the height of the post World War II baby boom, there was one dominant family form. At that time, 73% of all children were living in a family with two married parents in their first marriage. By 1980, 61% of children were living in this type of family and today, Less than half, 46% are. The declining share of children living in what is often deemed as traditional family has been largely supplanted by the rising shares of children living with single or cohabiting parents. Not only has the diversity in the family living arrangement increased since the early 1960s, but 
So has the fluidity of the family, non-marital cohabitation and divorce, along with the pre prevalence of remarriage and non-premarital recoupling in the U.S. makes for family structures that in many cases continue to evolve throughout a child's life. While in the past, child born to a married couple, as for most children were, were very likely to grow up in the home with those two parents. This is much less common today as a child living raiment changes with each adjustment in the relationship status of their parents. For example, one study found that over a three year period of time, about three in every 10, 31% of all children, church listen, younger than six, had experienced a major change in their family or household structure in the form of parental divorce, separation, marriage, cohabitation, or death, unquote. Six years old and under have had to deal with the adjustment. Six years old, church, and under have to deal with all the different adjustments that the parents make. I want you to just think about an infant who is so impressionable, who's taken all of these things in. Watching all of the disruption, the upsets in the family structure. And again, at this young, tender, tender, innocent age, they are, they are now having to watch mom and dad, the ones that birthed them into the earth, go through all of the ups and the downs and where they go, because they're children, they have to go. What they are involved in, because they're children, they have to be. What's going on in their lives, because they're children, they have to. The family. That's a picture of today's family. that family is extremely and has always been extremely important to God. I've shared this many times. I'd like to share this again. Family was so important to God that before God instituted the church, he instituted family. Before any tabernacle was built, before any people lifted up their hands in the sanctuary, before David put his heart or put his skills to the heart to make melody in the sanctuary, family was on the mind of God. Tell us about it, family matters. And it has always mattered to God. With all we know, personally speaking, and with all we've watched, with all that we've experienced, if you are 40 years old and older, and even 40 right now, is you're getting real close. We've all seen major changes. 
in the family structure. Am I right, Sister Smith? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Sister Smith knows about the family and the family that she was a part of in comparison to many of the people that are now much, much younger than her. It doesn't even look like family any longer. Remember the family uh, meetings we used to have and the gatherings and the, the, all those things that we used to have to make sure everybody knew who your people were. Because when you understand your people, now you understand the legacy and you understand the heritage and you understand why we as a family do the things that we do. Family is important. The long lasting legacy of grandpa and grandma meant a whole lot back then. means a lot. It frightens me in today's time to see what I see when it comes to the distance that we have between family members, the non-commitment, the non-connection that we have when it comes to family. If you and I were to allow our minds, just stay with me for a moment, we're getting just some good stuff in a minute. If you allow your mind to just simply run wild and think about all of the different types and those that say that they are families today, it could be a bit frightening. For so many no longer is it built upon a man having a woman and taking her for his wife to complement the family of God. Nowadays, two that is of the same gender. cannot reproduce, who cannot, if they come together and be fruitful, to surely multiply, that's it. Some people, as they look at themselves in a single home, them by themselves, they look at them alone as family. Do your research. Some people, again, as they, you know, come together without having that paper, we're family. And these are the things that our little impressionable children, they can all watch. And so a lot of times in situations like this, we wonder why the world has spiraled out of control. Why do we have this disconnect? Why do we have so many people who no longer want to connect? It's because of the lack of family pride. In Christianity, and with me being called to shepherd the church in the 21st century, God has always desired to receive all the glory. In other words, if anybody was going to be famous, keep fame. God says, I want to be famous. Of course. 
course, he did not need any help. He's famous. Although, although many people are trying to take his fame away, no matter what, he's God. He's famous. And with that, God always wanted famous families. As Abraham, as Isaac, as Jacob. He was always about families being famous on behalf, not of them, but on behalf, help me, of him. See, as children of God, as Christians, we've been called to keep God famous in the eyes of its or their beholders. We do this how, Bishop? We do this through lifestyle. We do this through our commitment, our devotion, our giving ourselves up to make sure that we go down in order for him to continue being lifted up. This is how I keep him famous. This is how I keep him above. This is how I make sure that his name is uh, just made noisy in our broad nations, praise the Lord. See, Isaiah 48, verse 11, you don't have to turn there, it says, For my own sake, for my own sake, I do this. How can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield my glory to another. I do these things for himself. Yes. In other words, I'm not going to allow myself or no one else to defame me. Whenever you defame a person, it's like I'm taking your fame away. Yes. God said, because I know that there is nobody around me that's capable of keeping me famous, I do it for my own sake. See, to be the fame in your life is to forget who you serve. Tell somebody lifestyle matters. And I tell you what, it's tough in this world. It's tough in this world, Brother Farrell, because everybody around us is doing just the opposite of what I'm teaching. It's tough in this world. It seems like we are the outcast and they're in. It seems as if they got everything going on and we have to try to catch up and get it. I sound matters. Conversation matters. The way I communicate, the way in which I talk, the way in which I handle my everyday affairs, listen church, it matters. Commitment to him matters. Because trust me, brothers and sisters, we are committed to something. Whether we say it or not, whether we might think it or not, deep down inside of our hearts, brothers and sisters, we have a strong commitment to something. We were made to worship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And worshiping has to do with what it is you are committed to. Because whatever you are committed to, you are going to bow down and you are going to worship that thing. Whether creature or creator. We're created to worship. This deals with God's widespread reputation. How reputable am I as a citizen of God? How reputable am I making him known in an earth that doesn't want nothing at all to do with him? How much reputation are you bringing about in his life? Yes, yes, yes. Fame. 
Fame has to do, you must understand, with the character. I make sure that people understand the character of Christ because I do not ever want you to think it's about my reputation, but I want you to understand the reputation of God has made the characters, characteristics, attributes attached to it. His character. He's God. He's supreme. He's ruler. He's overseer. He's domineering. He's powerful. He has no shortcomings at all. That's his character. He's famous. He's so famous that when people did not know where to go, there was a fire that showed them the way by night, and there was a cloud that showed them the way by night. He's so famous that when people don't understand how powerful he is, when the people of God were coming out from underneath bondage, there was a red sea that opened wide open and all the people flowed through, walked through on dry ground. Can you hear me? He's famous. He's so famous that in the midst of people that don't know nothing but darkness, there was a light. Sound down from heaven and he's sticking in there. He parted for a few days, opened his eyes back up, and now he may receive clearly with our wretched. He saved us. He saved us. It is only the people of God that can tell others about the power of God to let them know how famous. children of Israel were being positioned in Leviticus 20th chapter to go over. At this time they had not gone over yet. And before God was going to put them in a land that they would have to deal with other people who were not of their nationality, who were not those that came from his loins, if you will, those that had uh, influence in that nation. God said, let me position your heart first. Because it's no good for me to position you in a new territory, giving you prosperity, giving you power, giving you provision that I alone can give to you, and you forget the power that gave these things to you. God says, I'm going to deal with you right here where you are in order for me to help you to get along better on the other side. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He was dealing with the heart in the 20th chapter of the book of Leviticus. They need their heart to be dealt with. And of course, being that God always does the same thing the way he wants to do it, God said, I'm going to speak not to the children, Moses, but Moses, because you're the front man, I'm going to help you understand what I want you to do. So he speaks to Moses. Once he speaks to Moses, now Moses, you have to stand to make sure that though they don't understand how famous I am because you have everything that is within you in your hand, I want you to help the people understand how famous I really am in their lives. He tells them in verse number two, he says, say to the Israelites, amen, any Israelite or any foreigner residing in Israel. Check this out, please. Any Israelite or any foreigner that resides in Israel. Any Israelite or any foreigner that's in the land. Community. Anybody that's a part of the community of the people of God, I need you guys to understand, who sacrificed any of his children to mold it is to be put to death the members of the community are to stone him. Yes. Yes. My Lord, this is a tough way to open up the family series. But because he's so family oriented, he's saying to Moses to tell the children that any of them that offer their child up to Moses, you must understand, I need the entire community to look at that one person, to look at that family, and I need the community members to come out. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Don't think you're doing something 
why I'm here. What do you think this means, church? Again, God is so community oriented that he did not want anyone that was not serving and anyone that was not offering him worship and anyone that could potentially influence another family member to be put out of the camp. Yeah. 
Lord homage. Each of them desire to be worshipped. Each of them desire for somebody to bow themselves down and lift your hands up and say, that's my God. And we're in a day when there is so much spiritual talk and jargon and jesting. I come across so many people saying I'm spiritual. I don't believe in God. And this is what's going on. You must realize, church, there is nothing at all new under the sun. And it's not so much the adults that are laying on the altar of sacrifice. It's the babies. Those are the ones I'm concerned about. Those are the ones that got some more time on this earth to lead us. Those are the ones that have a bit more of a moment of, you know, than we do. See, Moloch was worshipped by the Amorites. All this took place in the land of Canaan. This is the place where God says, I'm going to send you guys to. Really and truly, the land of Canaan is not theirs. It is for the people of God. They're just holding it down before you get there. Yes, yes, yes. But when you get there, you remember what he told Saul, I want you to kill everything that belongs to the Amorites, everything that belongs to the Jebusites, everything that belongs to the Moabites, every, every, everything. And he disobeyed God. And God says, I am rejecting you from being king. Are y'all still here? Oh, this is serious stuff, church. It is so sad to me, brothers and sisters, listen here, let me see if I can preface this better. Uh, understand, each of us have had our own situations when it came to our family background, upbringing, and where we're going. We all had some issues. But what God wanted, and this has to be something that you make applicable to your own life, what God wants is for you to choose this day who you're going to serve. Because at the end of the day, it makes no difference what our neighbors are doing. It makes no difference what our colors are doing. It makes no difference what our friends are doing. What are you going to do in your house? And how are you going to honor him in your house? children in the ways of the Lord, that means go on, serve whatever God you want to. This is why it is so vitally important for us as people of God to train up a child in the way that they should go. See, there's some things that we can do to change the trajectory of our lives when it came come to fame and keeping God famous, it begins with me making a decision to say, you know what, I want to be one who lead a faithful family. Because you know what, church, I found this out, I've been pastoring now for 22 years, and I said to myself, you know what, I cannot force the Lord upon any one person at any given time. This has to be a choice. of that person's life. I can preach. I can teach. I can illuminate it. I can bring it alive. Boy, I tell you what. At the end of the day, it's an individual deal. Give God a hand of praise, man. It's an individual deal. family, especially as it pertains to the children's future. 
Number one, an F for fame, faithfulness. You know, if there was ever a time for faithful fathers to stand up and to know what's going on in the text, that time is right now. Because notice, at the very beginning of the book, if anybody was going to hold on to, maintain, and even manage a strong family, the father's job was to do that. Man, I tell you what, coming from Baker, Louisiana, we saw several depictions of what father guidance was. Some of them were good. And many of them were not so good. I'm sure it was the same way in your life. I don't know where you come from. I know you saw some things in your own lifestyle and in your own background and based upon your daddy's habits and based upon your grandfather's habits. You saw some things. I know you did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of them were good. And many of them were not so good. This is the reason why the only way we can bring the family into the place that it should be brought into is we have to come to a place in our lives to say, I'm going to be faithful, a faithful father, when it comes to the family. I've got to be committed. I must do it even if I don't feel like doing it. I have to bow when I don't want to bow. I have to submit when I don't want to submit. I've got to be faithful. Because see, if I'm going to keep the fame of God in focus when it comes to the family, I, number one, have to be faithful. Amen. In other words, how can I tell my baby, Amen. my child, Amen. how to be faithful and I don't want to be faithful? Yeah. How in the world am I going to teach them the way when I don't want anything pulling me in that way? How in the world am I going to be the lead when I don't last? See, people that are famous are known. Think about how they are first discovered. Think about how they begin building notoriety. And think about what keeps them there. There's a lot of chatter going on. People talking about them. People sharing Instagram posts about them. People are making sure that don't forget Beyonce, don't forget Jay, don't forget them, praise the Lord. Let's keep them what? Famous. But what about us? What about us when it comes to the people of God? Are we continuously talking about him? It's hard to love something or somebody that you don't talk about. When I love you, I'm going to talk a lot about you. When I believe you, I'm going to be there about you. I'm going to share something.
And this kills the whole plan. This shut the whole thing down. Because when we make him the light, and we cause him to shine, that's all that matters. Faith. F. Faithfulness. Second thing, A, you must understand acceptance. See, when we talk about family, you have to accept the responsibility of the family. You have to accept the responsibility of the family. You are a family. Every person in the family has a role in the family. Accept it. So many people are trying to get from underneath their place that they should be. Acceptance is important. See, they were responsible to stone anyone that was not following the letter. You accept, you own up to, you're responsible for, you're a keeper of the flame, you're doing your part. Listen, it hurts to be different. It hurts to go against the grain. It hurts to not be liked. It hurts to be hated on. It hurts. But at the end of the day, God is my helper. You see, when I understand that God is my helper, I'm not concerned about what hurts me. See, because when you accept your responsibility, then people see you're not a counterfeit. You're real. You are the real deal. I might need to really check some things in my life now. Accept. I know sometimes you all do not like going against your family's call. Every time I think about what God told Abram, he said, Abram, get thee out of thy country. It, if you want to be successful, if you want to get anything done from me, if you want to get anything done on my behalf, you got to get from thy country and from thy kindred. Because if you keep the same mentality that your father had, you will not be able to get where I want you to go. Accept. And again, listen here, let me say this, church. This has to be your own personal choice, decision. See, everybody's not going to heaven. Y'all all know that. <laughs> Everybody don't want to go. They don't even think it's real. They think it's a made-up, fictitious place that the white man gave to the black folk. And can I preach up in this house? Oh, boy. But when you had an encounter with Jesus, Because you're just a 
manage your bowls. Don't get it twisted. You're just managing my affairs. To make it easy on yourself. You're just, you're just managing my business. You know, it's easy for somebody else to do all the hard work. We call it the hard lifting, the heavy lifting. And you just come behind and just keep it going. That's all, we, that's all we're doing. And so you got to know how this, in your family construct, as a mom, as a dad, as a son, as a brother, as a sister, manage your portion. Manage your part. See, when you manage your part, mama and daddy can do what they need to be doing. Your brother can get over there and do what he needs to be doing. And at the same time, while you're doing what you need to be doing, we're all the family making God famous. But see, we got to put on a pride. We got to pride you. Stick you all the time. Push on you and kick on you. But he really don't want it to be done that way. It's too hard. Because you won't fool around and move away from being a manager and take on a title of being mean. Help me somebody. Am I talking right? And see, when we can, we're calling me managers. Just manage. Most of manage, manage the people. Tell the people to manage each other. Tell the people to manage those that are in the community. Manage, 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 manage. Everything around them is about management. It might come from God, but everybody else got a part of the plan is we need to manage better. See, the U.S. is a jacked up place. Why? Because nobody wants them, everybody wants to be the master. Ain't no one wants to manage. Everybody wants to be the master over somebody. Go check out the book. We were never supposed to lord over each other. Maybe like the fish in the sea, the fowl in the air, the cattle that, you know, upon the hill, the walks of the grass, and the birds, the fire. I was supposed to manage those, the million I have over that. He had not one time saying for me to manage my wife. Or, or be domineering over her. Faithfulness, acceptance. Three, we have to understand, manage. And four, here we go, e live effectively. See, everything we do should be effective. My life should be effective. I should be able to touch lives. You should be able to touch lives. And then your children, as they grow up, you pray and you believe and you hope that God will continue ministering to them to the point where they, when they grow up, we got the family that God said we should have. See, the Bible says, as I prepare to close, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his own wife. Do you want to know, God, if every time marriage takes place, God is trying to reestablish a new Genesis, a new beginning. Oh, yeah. this stuff is so powerful until it's crazy. Every time he brings a man and a woman together, and they are standing there before all of these witnesses. establishing a new Adam and God is establishing a new Eve because when he told the two of them at the very beginning I want you all to be fruitful and multiply 
that word that was given way back then is still applicable today. But if I start sacrificing to Moloch, if I start paying homage to Moloch, the heathen God, the God of the Amorites, the God of the Moabites, the God of the Jebusites, the God of the Parasites. If I start giving all of my homage to all of those gods that these people are serving and commingling with the foreigners of the land, you might go up temporarily. But on that great day, you're coming down. Paul told us last week, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down the imagination and every high thing that exalts. Do you know there are some high things that are exalting themselves above and beyond the knowledge of God? The Lord says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he's Lord. Church, listen. Thank you.